Well, we've looked at the best in show from the NFL Combine in Indianapolis. Uh, Phil Savage, our executive director, was in Indy for all four days of on-field workouts. In that time, he got to see all the top players, and now he has his super sleepers. This, this is actual. This is a team. You have quarterbacks, running backs, so tight ends, everything. This is your sleeper team. Yeah, this is the all combine sleeper team. And right. let's start with the quarterbacks. You know, two quarterbacks I think you have to keep your eye on. Tom Savage, University of Pittsburgh, one of the bigger quarterbacks in this draft, has a tremendous arm, can throw it to all parts of the field. He's a player to monitor. And then how about Connor Shaw from South Carolina, measured in a shade over six feet, a shade over 205 pounds. But he ran 4-6, one of the fastest quarterbacks at the combine, and he threw well in the drills. I think he's a player that can make the back end of a roster next year. Now, the running backs, I had a, a number of them. We covered Jarek McKinnon in terms of being best in show. I really want to highlight McKinnon because he's done very well here in Mobile and then also at the combine. Benched 32 times, ran sub 4-5, catches every pass. I'm not sure what it is that people are looking for in a versatile, all-purpose type of back, but I like Jarek McKinnon. Lorenzo Talaferro. Coastal Carolina was the biggest back in our game, 231 pounds. Now, he's not a speed merchant, but he's a good pass protector. He can run between the tackles, and he catches the ball well out of the backfield. And then a couple of others, Terrence West from Towson rushed for over 2,000 yards this year as that particular team, the Tigers, made it all the way to the FCS championship game. And then I love James White. The running back from Wisconsin came here to Mobile, was the North most outstanding player in the game. All he does is, is produce, had 4,000 plus yards at Wisconsin, shows up at the combine, just does everything he's asked to do, very efficient. I think he'll find a place in the league next year. Tight end wise, Crockett Gilmore, Colorado State. Showed up here midweek during Senior Bowl week, shows up at the combine, catches the ball well, 6'5 plus, 252 pounds. He's got some room to grow. I think people see an upside with him. And then how about a couple of receivers and a couple of offensive linemen to round out this offensive all-combine team. Kevin Norwood from Alabama has been seen as a possession receiver right. his whole career. Can't run. Runs four, four, high four fours at the combine, catches every pass thrown to him. And then Albert Wilson, a name that Bama fans may remember, He's from Georgia State. He had a 97-yard kickoff return against Alabama when the tide rolled the Panthers 63 to 7. But Albert Wilson's now a senior. He runs low 4-4s. He's got a chance as a slot receiver and return specialist in the NFL. Couple linemen. Wesley Johnson from Vanderbilt. Now, he didn't have that great of a week of practice down here, but he's tall. He's got some length. He's got position versatility, and he tested out well at the Combine. And then Gabe Eichert from Oklahoma, he's a guy that's not going to have, people did not expect him to have really good measurables. He actually, in fact, did have pretty good measurables. He can play center of guard, great young man, leader, understands the game. I think those are two linemen that you're going to see go in the later rounds of the draft that ultimately will make a team. All right, those are your sleepers, and your, your team's going to struggle a little bit with only two offensive linemen, but I'll, uh, <laughs> we'll go with that. Let's, well, there's only one defensive tackle here, so maybe they'll be all right. We'll talk about your defense. Yeah, the all-combine sleeper team begins with the defensive tackle from Southern Miss. Kyrie Thornton mm -hmm. ran five flat in the 40 at Indianapolis. Uh, was a part of a team that was 0-12, so he's a bit under the radar, although scouts went to Hattiesburg to see him. But he's a player that I think has a chance as a later round pick. And one of my favorite players that does not get talked about a lot is Chris Smith from Arkansas. Part of the reason for that is that alphabetically, he falls right behind Michael Sam from Missouri. And so every time Sam went to do something at the Combine, a slew of cameras, reporters, people are following him, and then here comes Chris Smith. Well, all Chris Smith did was check in at 6'1", 266 pounds, runs in the four sixes, tested out extremely well, worked out well in the drills. I think he's a player that could go as high as the third round, and I think he's going to be a, a nice addition for somebody. Couple linebackers that I like, Jordan Zumwalt, UCLA, has inside and outside versatility, can call the defensive signals. He ended up running in the four sevens. I think that helped him. And then Lamine Barrow from LSU, did not have a sensational senior year, but showed up here in Mobile, had a very good week of practice. He ran in the four sixes at the combine. If he can add a little bit more weight, he's got a chance to be a backup linebacker, special teamer as a rookie and contribute next year. 
Defensive secondary, two players I want to spotlight as potential sleepers. Jamea Thomas from Georgia Tech. He's a yellow jacket by name, but he's a stinger on the field. He will <laughs> pop you and run support. He's got quickness burst, ran in the four fives at the combine. Really a nice player as a combination safety, nickel cover type of player. And then Jalen Watkins, one of my favorite players from our game here at the Reese's Senior Bowl. He was actually moved from corner to safety and then played in the slot at Florida because the underclassmen juniors, Luchez Purifoy and Marcus Roberson were seen as being better athletes or faster. In fact, at the combine, Jalen Watkins ran faster than both of those two. He's got excellent ball skills, understands leverage angles. I think he's got a future in the NFL. It's probably a mid to late round pick, but you're gonna see him on a field next year for somebody because of his understanding of the game. He's used to being the, the second fiddle. I mean, his half brother is Sammy Watkins and he outran him too.